Welcome to What If, the show where I, Jake from State Farm, answer your insurance what ifs. Today's caller is Gio. What's up? Hey, Jake. What if I'm shopping for a new policy, but there are so many options that I freeze up and just can't choose? It's okay. An agent can help you choose the right coverage. At State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. Oh, now what if I need help deciding on dinner? Tacos. Good idea. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com for a quote today. Look around. You can find cars like these on Auto Trader. New cars, used cars, electric cars, maybe even flying cars. Okay, no flying cars, but as soon as they get invented, they'll be on Auto Trader. Just you wait. Auto Trader. Now, the greatest story never told with Miles and Thrill. Oh, welcome to the Greatest Story Never Told podcast. Seven episodes deep and away we go. Don't forget, if you'd like to be an unofficial sponsor of the Greatest Story Never Told podcast, I'll just please do us a favor, make a small uh, donation to one of the three local Fisher houses here in the Pacific Northwest. The Men's Room Original Red uh, helps fund, along with uh, Men's Room Sausage from Uli's World Famous Sausage mm-hmm. by Place Market. Uh, we'll start with a couple nice emails here. Got a few. It says, uh, guys, what's up, fellas? I'm not emailing for anything in particular. I'm enjoying this nice day, having a few beers, Coors Banquets in the Stubbies. And doing yard work now that it's nice outside. And, of course, catching up on The Greatest Story Never Told, as well as your guys' daily podcast. And I thought I should uh, thank you guys for everything you do. I'm a social worker and supervise visits between parents and their kids that have been removed and are in foster care. Sometimes it can be tough seeing families ripped apart and struggling. But the drive back from uh, visits is always bearable because I like uh, to listen to your show and forget about how shitty the world is for a while. Miles, you tell stories that I could listen to for days. Thrill, I can dig your uh, uh, perpetual cynicism all too well. Thank you. Ted makes me laugh till I want to puke, not to mention Mike Hawk and his invaluable contributions to the show. You Ooh. guys have made uh, life a little better for me and literally tens of, uh, tens of other people. <laughs> <laughs> so if anything, at least you can be proud of that. Keep on rocking, guys. Up from Victor in Omaha, Nebraska. Victor, we appreciate that. Uh, as far as the greatest Damn, story Omaha, ever told. Huh? Yeah. All right. Got a $40, dona- a $40 donation here from uh, Chuck. Uh, thank you, Chuck. We appreciate that. So Chuck is our unofficial sponsor. He's got a little story that he wants to share. All right. Guys, I want to share a story I've uh, kind of told parts of, but never the whole thing. So my buddy, who we'll call Jim, my brother-in-law, we'll call Mikey, and I are in Albuquerque, New Mexico on a guy's trip. This was back in the early 90s. Now, my brother-in-law is about 15 years younger than me. At this point, he's 15. We're staying in a cheap motel, the kind where migrant workers live during the harvest season. Each room has a door to the outside. Our room is on the ground floor, and our door faces the back of the property. That means our back deck opens to the main interior parking lot. There's only two rooms that have this set up at the entire motel. Well, we get into town, buy a few cases of beer, some vodka, single malt scotch, hanging out on our deck, having fun, and Mikey walks across the way to get some ice. He comes back with an armful of bread, like 12 loaves of Sara Lee. We're like, what the F are you doing with all that bread? He points to a bread truck and says, he took it from that. Are you stupid? (laughs) He sets the bread down on one of the beds and goes back for more. I run after him thinking he's gone nuts. There's a sign on the back of the truck that reads, free, take all you want. I don't know if the guy got fired and was sticking to the company, but this trick is loaded with all kinds of bread, mini bagels, full-size bagels, the works. So I grab my truck, and we fill the back of my crew cab with the stuff so uh, so full I can't see out the back. Keep in mind, we're only in town for a few days. So now we're drinking and eating bread. When a couple of migrant workers walk by, we offer them a beer and a bagel and start talking. Before too long, more people come over. We're serving beer and bread like it's free, because it was. Then I say I could really go for some burgers. A guy says he has a barbecue, and we're just a few steps away from a grocery store. Mikey and I stumble over and buy a bunch of stuff for burgers and hot dogs, get back, and the grill is hot, so we cook a lot of food. Back then, weed in New Mexico was still very illegal, plus I was active duty military. One of the workers comes up, hands me a brown paper bag, and says, Man, I haven't sat down and had a beer and a meal with normal people in forever. I just want to say thanks. Then he walks off. I go inside, open the bag, and see maybe a half pound of weed. But it doesn't really look like weed. Turns out I had only ever smoked leaves, and this is bud. I did not know anything about this. Tim walks in, sees the bag, what's in it, and flushes the whole damn thing down the toilet, oh. saying, not for you, military man. Anyway, day turns tonight. I'm jonesing for a cigar, which I uh, have, but the lighter we used on the barbecue belonged to the guy with the weed. He's gone. It's a little after midnight. Mikey and I, drunk as hell, say, no problem. He walks off. A few minutes later, I hear a loud bang. 
I look over and see Mikey SWAT kicking motel doors. I run over and ask him, what in the F is he doing? He says he's trying to get a lighter, but no one wants to talk to him. So he thinks they're rude and decides to kick down the doors. I say they're asleep, stupid. We walk back to the room. I use the bathroom. Mikey's gone again. I asked him where he went. He said to go get matches. I immediately take off looking for him and find him doing what looks like unlocking a motel door, but there's a strangely shaped window next to it, taller and skinnier than the others. Turns out that's a window to the office, the back door of which Mikey is trying to break into. Then I see two massive tattooed, tattooed arms folded in the window, just watching Mikey. I run up and smack his head and ask him what the hell he's doing. He said they have matches. <laughs> we walk back to the room and call it a night. Around 3 a.m., I have to pee, and I see this really nice campfire glow in the room before panic sets in because we're not camping. <laughs> the barbecue is reignited, and for some reason, <laughs> flames about three feet high are coming off this thing. It's under the awning, and smoke is billowing all over. I run out there, still having to pee and seeing a problem and a solution. I begin working to put the fire out with urine. Tim wakes up, sees the situation, joins in, and starts peeing as well. <laughs> this smell, fellas, if you've never smelled it, I don't know how to describe it, but it's not something anyone wants to smell. And with warm nights in Albuquerque, everyone has the window next to the door open, and the steam is flowing up, hitting the awning, and spreading down the hall and into the rooms. The barbecue, by the way, still has some fire in it. But I grab it, pull it across the parking lot to the side of the taller part of the motel where the awning is maybe 20 feet up. Next morning, Tim tells me the barbecue belongs to the motel owner. That taller part of the motel is his house, and there's a trail of ash leading from our deck all the way to where it sits. As we drive past, I can still smell it. We went and well, bought the guy a new barbecue and hauled the old one to the dump. If you've never been to a strange town's dump, don't. It's weird. Out-of-state plates, tossing a barbecue that smells like urine. People who live there don't seem like tourists showing up at places not meant for tourists. It was weird. We had the best bread for like six months. Thanks for the laughs, guys. That, from Chuck. that is a fantastic story, man. That's great. All right. Have you or a loved one been injured in an accident? Are you struggling to recover fair compensation? Look no further. At Phillips Law Firm, the experienced personal injury attorneys will fight for your rights and get you the justice and compensation you deserve. They handle a wide range of cases, including car accidents, slip and falls, medical malpractice, and workplace injuries. Justice is a phone call away, so don't wait. Call today for a free case review. Call 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Ah, speaking of uh, stories, uh, we want to tell you a couple uh, today about uh, just a uh, couple of different experiences we've had as far as going to different locations. We're going to do a show today about customers going a little bit uh, crazy on people, but uh, typically the way things work now, we've been telling you we go to 7-Eleven a lot. Yeah, well, it's the only thing open. Right. And uh, I think we've told you the story about uh, the last time that we were in there. There's a guy in front of us at the register, and he's just having a hard time getting it together. He's got a Mountain Dew in his hand. He's cracked out. Uh, he is just, he cannot remember where he put his card. It's in one pocket. It's in the other. And his he pants takes... won't stay up without his hand. Yeah. So everything he's doing is one-handed because the other hand is firmly planted on the waistband. Of... It's or just his Johnson. When he walks in, there's situation. a guy standing right. looking at me holding his Johnson, right? So I'm like, oh, God. Here but it's 7-Eleven, so you're like, all right. So there's one register open. I'm behind this guy. He's having a difficult time. The uh, the cashier says, just, I'm going to help the next guy. That's me. Whatever. So he's still kind of mumbling and trying to find his card and all this other stuff. And I walk up, and I get a pack of cigs and ask the guy for two pieces of pizza. And this guy turns and looks at me and goes, you know, man, that's really going to mess up your stomach. <laughs> like that guy. Turns out I just had two pieces of pizza from there today, and my stomach is absolutely killing he me. He was so right. The crackhead. He might have been on to something. But uh, the time we walked in there before... This guy, uh, I'm, well, I check out first. So I'm kind of waiting near the door because there's there's always something going on in there. So I just want to make always. sure that I'm close to the exit, you know, if necessary. So this guy walks in, and he basically says. Uh, He's got one like a boom box or whatever, all right? So Miles is a white dude. This guy walks in. He was very nice. Yeah. Very nice guy. nice guy. And he walks in, greets people. Nothing wrong with that. But he walks in, sees Miles standing there. Sup, <laughs> Miles, of course, is like. How do I respond to this? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> what I'm not do sure. I say? I don't think that's in a pamphlet or a guide yeah, or right. any kind of instruction manual on how to uh, to answer that question. You just say what's up, man. <laughs> yeah, but we we have uh, we have had a few instances where things have got out of hand. I think we told you about the time that we got kicked out of a uh, a Chinese restaurant, that, for lack of a better term, that sure. does karaoke uh, simply because. 
it was just this bizarre experience where uh, one of the gentlemen at the uh, bar did not have arms. <laughs> so he was he was drinking and eating with his feet. He ordered like a steak or something. But he's at the bar. But he's got the fork and knife between his toes. And he is cutting the thing. I mean, but he's doing it as well as you would, right? Because sure. obviously, but, but it took us a minute to notice this because he was already there when we got there. And we're sitting kind of at Caddy Corner. So when you look up, you see him, and it's no big deal. And then at some point, we kind of look at each other like, I'm pretty sure I just saw his foot like up on the plate, right? But when you look back, it wasn't. So you're like, no, that couldn't have been right. And then we glance over there again, and I'm watching him cut a steak with his feet. Mm-hmm. And we're like, yeah. and then he realized he doesn't have any arms. But he's eating at the bar. Yeah, I mean, he's sitting he's in the He's not even at his own table. Yeah. He's at the I mean, bar. Next to other at people. At the bar, right? So, we're so just... like, his knee is rubbing the guy yeah. next to him so he can cut his... <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, what is he going to do? So, and I remember he he high-fived the uh, bartender with his foot when he was leaving because he's a regular. Okay. Right? So, so she's he... like, see you next time, James. He's like, all right, and you're here. Yeah. But this is but this is not this is not this is not the straight I mean this is it's very different to see somebody who's you know that kind of skill level, with their obviously. feet. But that wasn't what, what what got us kicked out. We didn't say anything to that guy. It was just amazing to watch this guy do his It thing. was just odd, yeah. right. There was this guy gets up and he's gonna do karaoke and he did like two or three songs in a row. And he was All we, Frank Sinatra. We could way. not keep it together. He was so bad oh, that like no. we like you just as soon as you thought it was over, he'd like hit another <laughs> bad note. Or he'd like break into another song, but man, he was loving life. So. He was happy to be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was god awful, and there's a reason why he was bad, and the reason was obvious, and we won't state it here. But it had nothing to do with that. It's just it was so bad and so loud and so endless that Miles and I start laughing, right? And we're trying to keep it together, so we're not pointing at him, going brah. Yeah, nothing like that. We're just our shoulders are bouncing up and down yeah. repeatedly while we're sitting at the bar, right? So the bartender at one point says, "Listen, guys." You got to cut it out. We're like, we're, we're sorry, man. We're not. And she goes, no, it's not that. She's like, you guys can't stop laughing. She's like, it's making me laugh. <laughs> and this guy, she, and honest to God, the reason she kicked us out, and we're not, not because we were being bad. She said, you have to go because you keep making me laugh. And if I laugh at this particular guy in this situation, right. it's going to reflect badly on me. I've never been booted. Like, it was not bad behavior. Mm, it no. was. We just got kicked out. I can't stop laughing because you guys won't stop laughing. And right. when I piece together what you guys were laughing about, like laughter can be infectious even when you don't know what someone's laughing at. In mm-hmm. this case, it got infectious. Then she pieced together why we were laughing. And because this guy would not stop, she couldn't stop laughing right. either. So it's like, hey, you got to go. I'm going to end up losing my job because so this is too funny now. Almost had to get kicked out of the Chili's to go in the Anchorage airport. We told you about that, too, because the woman wouldn't serve me. And she was about to kick me out as soon as I sat down for no reason. We literally sat at yeah. the table. She hands us menus and like anything. Do you guys want drinks? And as she says that, she looks right at Miles and goes, "Not for you." Right. We were like, oh, yeah. "Damn!" You, you had any- to have said something. I didn't no, say anything. This honestly, was nine thirty. You know him, but he didn't say anything. I didn't say a word. <laughs> All we did was sit down, and she looked right at him and said, "Not for nope. you." No. Nope. Were you nope. there the night before? Or no. <laughs> it was in the airport. I've never seen this woman before. <laughs> in her I'm just life. trying to get some breakfast before we fly out. I have no idea what the deal is. All right. So then we got a couple more for you. This episode is brought to you by Bitly. From brick and mortar shops and online retailers to healthcare providers and software companies, every business can make meaningful customer connections with Bitly. Create online and offline experiences that turn customers into super fans. Customize your short links, create QR codes, curate your link in bio, and track performance all in one place with the Bitly Connections platform. The possibilities for connection are endless. Get inspired at bitly.is slash Spotify. Uh, the legendary Al Gaucho here in uh, Seattle. I think it's moved to a new location. It had because the crocodile's moving in its former location. I'm not sure where they went though. Okay, all right. So, oh, the crocodile's moving into Al Gaucho. Yeah, because remember we were reading about the crocodile's oh, getting wow. a bigger space and all this, and we're like, man, that address seems familiar. I'm pretty sure because remember Al Gaucho also had the movie theater. Yeah, they they do. So the crocodile, because yeah. it's an extensive space. There's a theater. I mean, it, there's a lot of room there. Yeah. Uh, one night we were in there. This was we were at the bar, and I think we were pretty hammered at this point in time, and we ran into a group of teachers. Now, is this goat hair? Yeah, in the context of <laughs> it. But anyway, well, here's what you have to remember. Here's what you have to remember. For some reason, I don't know if I had new shoes or whatever the deal you was. You did, and you were excited about but it. But I was like, I saw you my new shoes. Just throw, throw my shoe. Keep in mind, El Gaucho has got like those five feet tall, tall freaking. Bar stools. And this is the high class steakhouse. Yeah, sure. right? These are there's business up. being done in this. And place. like Ted would describe his head hitting the back of the trees, I just feel myself falling backward, like, wah! 
Bam. <laughs> Guy picks me up in like two seconds. That's how Gaucho. It's like first class service. You okay? Fine. Whatever. But we're talking to these teachers. And I said some of the most cruel crap. You really did. That I even don't even want to get into to this day. But, but it, <laughs> they didn't seem to be that offended. Uh, I think Maybe. because it was so relentless, they got a callous to it. I guess so. I mean, like, right. this was like an hour of yeah. you just. Oh, man. I was some of the richest descriptions of things I've, <laughs> I've ever uh, heard. Okay. So then we sit down. And <laughs> I they, bet you. And then uh, <laughs> there's a big bowl of fruit. All right. So Al Gaucho at the time, they used to order, like, they just had a big bowl of fruit sitting on the table. So, of course, Steve starts juggling. Well, yeah, I can't help him, man. So if you know like, how to juggle, you juggle like, anything. But you got to remember, this is a steakhouse. Like, there's people around. So he's juggling fruit, man. And fruit's, fl- show. fruit's flying everywhere. <laughs> but the way El Gaucho's set up, man, it's it's kind of like this permanent ramp. You know what I mean? You kind of go up to the next level. No real stairs. Everything's a ramp. But I'm juggling. It was an apples or oranges. Orange or something like that. But uh, I drop one. And this goddamn thing starts rolling down the ramp, right? So, I mean, <laughs> it's rolling past tables. And it comes to stop in front of this waiter. And I'm like, oh, no. He walks up with his orange, polishes it with a napkin, puts it back in the bowl. Said, hey, you did a pretty good job. Try to keep them in your hands. Like, they don't kick you out. Yeah. It, dude, they don't care. I don't want to say they don't care what you're doing there. It's not true. But they give you a lot of leeway. And mm-hmm. this dude's falling backwards off the bar stool, clearly drunk. Oh, Doesn't man. matter. Hammered. They sit us down. I'm juggling. I'm drunk. Dropped on. They don't care. They're like, hey, just. Ryan Castle is at one point, sometime, uh, maybe a separate occasion. He's so, uh, he, he's just, he is being Ryan Castle at this point. And he wants to get the macaroni and cheese, but he asks, you know, jokingly, uh, hey, can you put, like, cut up hot dogs in it? Because it's macaroni it and cheese. Because it, right. like it was like the early days of macaroni and cheese making a comeback. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? So it was like macaroni and cheese wasn't as fashionable right. as it is now. It was in the, like, the bring back tot stage. You right. know, it was just the beginning of that. So he's like, yeah, man, can I get cut up hot dogs in it? And the waiter basically says, let me see what I can do. Well, it's the El Gaucho. So any request, <laughs> if they can meet it, they're going to meet it. So they run across the street. And they buy a package of hot dogs. From the little bodega. And they, they, and they this might shock up. you, but El Gaucho doesn't carry hot dogs on the Yeah, menu. they do not. But they ran across the street. They cut them up, and they put them in his macaroni and cheese and <laughs> served them. Now, that, not, not first class. I don't know what is. And one more. Uh, we went, This is how messed up we were. We went into a pizza parlor. Now, this was in Portland. And it was old town. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, 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 wait. Just... We were messed up, but this story is how messed up you were. We were unwilling participants in your decision. Oh. We all got some of the collateral, but this is how messed up you were. Right. So keep in mind, at this point in time, for uh, the story's sake, uh, there have been a lot of new originals practicing going on. Mm-hmm. All right. So Ryan plays the drums in the new originals. And a lot of practice means his hands just get absolutely torn up. I mean, like, he's got blisters all oh. over his hands. I'm on some type of psychedelic at the point. At this point, I'm pretty sure. It was Molly. Yeah. We were all in a great place. Right, exactly. Real I'm just happy. losing my mind. But you know me, man. i got to pop anything like that that I see. He's got this giant blister. So he's got, like, his hand up at the bar, and he's talking to, like, Steve or somebody on the other side, and I grab his arm without him knowing it. And at this point in time, I've been lifting and stuff, so I can really easily overpower Castle. I probably couldn't do it now because I haven't been doing crap. But I've got him by the arm, and I'm like, I'm trying to squeeze. He won't let me in. So I just reach in with my mouth, and I, I bite this blister. But here's the thing. And it goes shooting. This thing. All <laughs> over the ball. Pizza. It's huge. Beer glasses. It's just pus. I mean, everybody just looked at me like, oh, my God, dude. And Castle's like, ah! He's screaming. But I'm like, the pain's gone, isn't it? The pain. He's like, yeah, the pain's gone. I mean, I just there's like two huge teeth marks in the skin of his finger for me popping this blister. Then we kept drinking and eating pizza. Yeah, we just ate the pizza anyway. There's one guy there, I won't say his name, our curly-haired friend. Yeah. And he's probably the most responsible guy there. The look of disgust on his face for the rest of the time, like everyone else kind of got over it, we moved on. This dude, every time I looked at him, just, I mean, he, he, he could not believe what he'd seen. He I never recovered from it. I don't it. think so. I mean, it was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's why we don't go out in public very much. Well, that and COVID. Right. Although we're going out tonight. Yeah, we are going out tonight. This yeah. is what's crazy. This is why you make friends with bartenders, right? So Washington eases up on the restrictions or whatever, at least here in King County. I get a text. From a former bartender. Been about a year since we've seen each other. Right? Says, hey, I'm working at a new joint. You and Miles need to come down. I'm like, cool. 20 minutes later, a different bartender texts me. Hey, man, they're easing up. Want to see you guys. 
They work at the same yeah. place. So we don't, always, right. we don't always make fools of ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> they're cool we're with, wanted. Yeah, with, <laughs> with them, they're cool. Yeah. All right, there you go on the greatest story never told podcast. You've been listening to The Greatest Story Never Told with Miles and Thrill on Radio.com. Oh, man. A Double Flush production. <laughs>